This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 9th day of June in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here is what we're tracking tonight. The political parties were united this afternoon in their praise for the staff of the Ghana Elections Commission that worked at the recounting of ballots. The results from the recount of Region 4 ballots were officially certified this afternoon and signed off by the political parties that contested the region except for the APNU AFC coalition. The incumbent coalition has been refusing to sign off on the recount certification documents as it maintains that the recount has unearthed multiple cases of electoral fraud that must be addressed by the Elections Commission. APNU AFC tabulation agent and candidate Jarita Finance told reporters this afternoon that with the ballot count and tabulation phase of the process now completed, the Elections Commission will have to act on the discrepancies and anomalies that have been recorded in the observation reports. I think that the observation report has already cast more than a shadow of doubt on the process. The process from day one, we went into the very first box, we have been seeing numerous anomalies and it has been coming to front. So yes, I believe that has already been done and it's up to the CARICOM team right about now and then the CEO also to send that report through to the commission. Her fellow APNU AFC candidate and tabulation agent Daniel Seram reminded that the Elections Commission is still investigating the issue of those ballot boxes that contained no official documents. So there is, is an ongoing investigation for the issues with the boxes that don't have statutory documents in them. Right? Um, there wasn't a press release done on it, there wasn't any information given to us and we would have written formally to find out about this, yet no response. So please keep that in mind. Meanwhile, PPP candidate and tabulation agent Dr. Frank Anthony said he does not believe that the observation reports can cast any shadow over the results of the recount. He said the recount order was very clear and the chief elections officer must now prepare his report for submission to the commission. The CEO is going to put together his, um, his report and present that to the GCOM and GCOM would then do a declaration. Well, we know that the declaration that was first issued by um, GCOM varies with this current one. But this declaration now, well, it's not a declaration as yet. This certification matches what we have on the SOPs. So when you compare SOP with the certification of these SORs, they are basically the same thing. Where you had the variance is the numbers by which Mr. Mingo would have uh, declared. Um, so obviously there's a mismatch there. And so with this recount, we have been able to correct that. And the leader of the Liberty and Justice Party, Lennox Schumann, who could be heading to Parliament for the join the list, said the three small parties that will share that one seat intend to hold the next government accountable. See how we could take that seat and utilize it to hold the incoming administration accountable. What has happened, the same kind of accountability that was asked of this outgoing administration, if I were to be so presumptuous, is what we are going to have to do to the incoming administration. We will have to ensure that that administration, regardless of who sits there, is held to account to the people and that we can never go down this path again. Based on the undeclared results, the People's Progressive Party Civic has picked up 50.69% of the votes cast, with its closest rival, the APNU AFC, bagging 47.34% of the votes. In total, based on the tabulation, the PPP won 233,336 votes, while 217,920 persons voted for the APNU AFC. The remaining small parties together won 8,852 votes with the Liberty and Justice Party leading that pack with its 2,657 votes. A total of 4,211 ballots were rejected. The incumbent APNU AFC appears to be holding out with its claims of electoral fraud. In a statement recently, the party said the Elections Commission may need to remove all of the votes that cannot be validated from the recount. The coalition has been pointing to a number of anomalies uncovered during the recount, which it believes brings the entire elections into the question. President David Granger has said he will abide by whatever declaration is made by the Elections Commission Chairman. More news coming up in just a moment. We all want to stay in touch, right? Now, even more than ever before. So to keep your connection strong, GTT is going two for two. 
combined GTT mobile and home internet services and we'll give you 2 gigs of free mobile data each month. With 2 GTT services, you're fully connected at home and on the go. Visit us online at gtt.co.gy slash 2 for 2 to learn more and start doing more with 2 for 2 from GTT. Stay safe. Stay strong, Diana. We're in this together. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Parents and guardians, you are encouraged to tune in to the Guyana Learning Channel, Cable 29 or Channel 42 for daily educational and interactive learning sessions. The nursery program airs from six hours to nine hours. Primary programs from nine hours to 12 noon. We also air informative documentaries from 12 noon to 13 hours. And our secondary level programs are aired from 13 hours to 15 hours. Please continue to listen to our radio broadcasts. The interactive radio instruction for grades one to three daily on Voice of Guyana from 9 hours 30 to 10 hours for grade 1 pupils, from 10 hours 30 to 11 hours for grade 2s, and 13 hours to 13 hours 30 for grade 3 pupils. Please remember to tune in to benefit from these educational opportunities. A message from the Ministry of Education. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. Getting your workplace ready for COVID-19. Surfaces such as desks, tables, and telephones with keyboards must be wiped with disinfectant regularly, or at least every few hours. Use containers of hand sanitizers and place them in prominent places around the workplace. Provide access to places where staff can wash their hands with soap and water and promote regular hand washing at the workplace. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Welcome back. APNU AFC candidate and incumbent Attorney General Senior Counsel Basil Williams has issued a call on the Guyana Elections Commission to remain true to its gazetted recount order and all of the requirements of that order. With the recount process moving into stage two, which is the completion of a report on the recount by the Chief Elections Officer, there have been political and legal arguments about how the Elections Commission could address complaints of alleged fraud uncovered during the recount. In a statement today, Mr. Williams reminded that the recount order is subsidiary legislation, having been published in the official Gazette and therefore a law of the land binding on GCOM and all the political parties that contested the elections. He explained that contrary to the views of some political commentators, the Elections Commission can resolve the issues surrounding discrepancies and anomalies that were uncovered, including reports of votes allegedly being cast for persons who were out of the country on Elections Day and persons who are dead. Williams' position is that the process is not just about the recount of ballots, but also about the credibility of the elections. He said the order makes it clear that both the chief elections officer and the commission will have to assess the discrepancies that are revealed in the observation report forms from the recount. Once the report by the chief elections officer is completed, it will have to be presented to the commission for it to study. The CARICOM high-level team will also submit a report of its own. The review of the reports will ultimately lead to the declaration of the results by the chairperson of the elections commission. Mr. Williams said it is incumbent on the election Commission to stay the course and be true to its order and not be encouraged to turn its back on its own order.
Turning now to the field of education, with schools set to reopen from next Monday for students preparing to set the NGSA and CXC examinations, the Ministry of Education is conducting an online survey for teachers on the wider reopening of schools. Schools in Guyana have been closed since March because of the coronavirus pandemic. The online survey, which is available on the Ministry's website and social media pages, seeks out the thoughts of teachers on several issues related to the reopening of schools and their feelings about such a move. A total of 1,061 persons have so far responded to the survey, with the majority of them identifying the public education system as their place of employment. 34.2% of those surveyed have indicated that they are most concerned about physical health issues with the reopening of schools, while 26% of those responded said they were more concerned about expectations being high for them to get students back on track. As for the concerns for students, a large majority of the respondents said that they worry about a decline in the academic performance of the students. In response to a question about steps that should be taken whenever schools reopen in full, more than 60% surveyed said there should be additional health and sanitation measures, smaller class sizes, more online sessions, more guidance and counseling sessions, and less hosting of large non-essential events. There is also the belief that there will be the need for the introduction of in-school remedial sessions that become part of the regular school curriculum, and this will be used to assist those students who have have fallen behind. The majority of respondents also gave an undertaking that they would be willing to participate in additional learning opportunities for students, including summer school, extended days, and tutorial sessions, all in an effort to assist the students academically after the long school break. Those who responded to the survey also said that for future early closures, the Ministry of Education should have a plan in place to provide students with the necessary learning tools they would normally have at school as they work from home. Education officials have been meeting in the past weeks to examine various proposals for the full reopening of schools, which is likely to come either late August or early September. Their main focus, however, has been on the reopening for the upcoming national examinations. Let's tell you that the Public Health Ministry reported today that Guyana has recorded two new cases of the coronavirus in the past 24 hours. The two new cases were recorded from a total of 38 completed tests. Two more persons have also made full recoveries, and that takes the total number of recoveries up to 86. There are still 58 active cases, with just one person in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. Director of Primary Health Care Dr. Hortensia Hamilton said Guyana needs to follow the example of some other Caricom states, which have limited the transmission of COVID-19. As you are aware, most of the Caribbean countries managed to limit the transmission of COVID-19 in their country, with Guyana, Jamaica, and Haiti being among the only countries that continue to report new cases. Bravo to Barbados and Trinidad, who have reported no new cases in 14 and 7 days respectively, and Antigua that has not reported any new cases in 35 days. Dr. Hamilton said there are a number of factors that influence the decline in the spread of the disease and those must be given attention by citizens. I wish to underscore and remind our fellow Guyanese to be cognizant of the contributory factors leading to the decline in number of reported cases. Physical distancing, cough and sneeze etiquette, hand washing, and most importantly, staying at home. Let's prioritize them so that Guyana too can begin to see no new cases. The government of Guyana recently extended its health emergency measures and curfew to aid in fighting the coronavirus until the 17th of this month. However, the country is also looking to start a phase reopening soon. Well, the University of Guyana today announced that its search for its 11th Vice-Chancellor has ended with the appointment of Professor Paloma Mohammed. Professor Mohammed becomes the first woman to be selected for the Vice-Chancellor's position in the 57-year history of the University of Guyana. In its statement, the University Council offered its best wishes to the new Vice-Chancellor, indicating that she led the field of other stellar contenders for the position and secured the endorsement of the University's Council. 
Up until her appointment, Professor Mohammed, who is a behavioral scientist, was serving as a deputy vice chancellor responsible for philanthropy, alumni, and civic engagement. Professor Mohammed served previously as the director of the Center for Communication Studies and the dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Guyana. She was educated at the University of Guyana, Harvard University, and the University of the West Indies in Trinidad and Tobago. Mohammed has been the recipient of a number of local and international awards for her writing and mentoring work. In education and culture, including a Presidential Medal of Service in 2012 and the City of New York Award for Culture in 2013. She became the first woman Caribbean laureate for excellence in arts and letters in 2015 and was again recognized for her work in education and culture with the National Award, the Arrow of Achievement, in May of 2015. Legal matters to report now. One week after a high court judge threw out the murder charge and committal to stand trial against Marcus Bisram, the director of public prosecution has moved to the full court to appeal the judge's decision. Last week, Justice Simon Morris Ramlal set Bizram free after quashing the DPP's direction to the magistrate to reopen the case and commit Bizram to stand trial, describing the DPP's direction and the committal as unreasonable. Now the DPP wants the full court to set aside the decision of Justice Morris Ramlal. In its application to the full court, the DPP said in addition to the judge's decision being set aside and reversed, it wants the full court to rule that the directions given by the DPP P's office to the magistrate were lawful, proper, and reasonable, and that the arrest of Bizram by the police was also lawful and proper. The full court is also being asked to grant an order committing Marcus Bizram to stand trial at the next sitting of the criminal assizes. It is the view of the DPP that a judge erred in law in striking out parts of the DPP's affidavit without giving the office an opportunity to be heard. The DPP also believes that a judge erred and was misconceived in law when she found that the DPP did not properly follow the procedure in law that covers direction for committal. Additionally, the office of the DPP also shares the view that the judge also erred in law in making a finding in relation to the credibility of the evidence of the witness and finding that it was not credible and sufficient for a committal. Several other reasons for the appeal were listed in the official notice of appeal. Marcus Bizram was extradited from the US last year to face a murder charge in the local courts. That extradition came after a long battle in the US courts by him to block the extradition. Once in Guyana, Bizram was charged, but his case crawled through the courts as there were several issues regarding the prosecution's readiness and the first magistrate who started to hear the matter. That magistrate was forced to remove himself from the case. The preliminary inquiry eventually got on the way and after listening to the witnesses who were called during the inquiry, the lawyers for Bizram put forward their no-case submission. A number of other persons have also been charged in connection with the same murder. The murder victim, Fayaz Narindat, was beaten to death then crushed by a car in Berbe after it was alleged that he turned down advances by Bisram. By the time the matter was investigated, Bisram had already left the country. Across the Region is coming up next. Wondering how you can access free learning materials for your children? Parents and guardians, please visit the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.gy to access textbooks, past papers, and practice tests to keep your child engaged in continuous learning. When you have accessed the site, go to the Students tab, wait for a second, and choose the appropriate option. You now have access to the resources you need. You are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity as we strive to provide the best education for the nation children a message from the Ministry of Education They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Being. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all do right, walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right
Hi Guyana, it's your boy Kimo Paul here. Remind you to stay at least one meter away from persons or three feet to avoid contracting the flu or the COVID-19. It is also important that we stay at home and to avoid gatherings of more than five persons. We must all play our part, so let's protect ourselves and our families from COVID-19. We must all play our part. The Ministry of Public Health cannot do this alone. So let's all come together and fight this virus. For further information, check our website www health.gov.gy or visit the ministry's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube or Twitter page. Across the region right now, Haiti has recorded more than 3,000 cases of the coronavirus during a one-month period, as the French-speaking Caricom country announced that 262 cases had been confirmed over 24 hours on Monday. The Ministry of Public Health in Haiti said the new cases, more than 100% on the previous day, bring the total to 3,334 cases since the first case was detected on the 19th of March. It's said that in the past 30 days, there had been 3,205 more positive of cases and the death toll had increased by 1 to 51. The Ministry of Health in Haiti said there were 3,259 active cases, while the number of suspected cases since March 9 is 7,351. This evening, Jamaica is reporting an 11% reduction in major crimes for the first five months of this year, as compared to the same period last year. Deputy Police Commissioner in charge of crime, Fitz Bailey, said 2,325 major crimes were recorded between the 1st of January and May 31, as compared to 2,621 last year. He reported that the clear-up rate for major crimes for the period was 41% due to better prepared cases, more arrests and convictions. Over the period, 3,304 persons were charged for 5,082 incidents of serious crimes, with 808 charged for Category 1 crimes, including murder, shooting, larceny, robbery, rape, burglary, aggravated assault, and assault. In addition, 227 firearms were recovered and 13 kilograms of cocaine seized in the past six months. And finally tonight, international news. The BBC reports that a Brazilian Supreme Court judge has ordered President Jair Bolsonaro's government to resume publishing full data on COVID-19 amid accusations of censorship. Brazil's health ministry removed data from its website and stopped releasing cumulative totals for deaths and cases on Saturday, provoking an uproar. The ministry said it would only report cases and deaths in the past 24 hours. Mr. Bolsonaro said actions were being taken to improve COVID-19 reporting. But critics accuse the far-right president's government of data manipulation, with Brazil's National Council of State Health Secretaries describing the move as authoritarian, insensitive, inhumane, and unethical. Now the Supreme Court has intervened, telling the Ministry of Public Health in Brazil to fully re-establish the publication of COVID-19 data in the interest of public health. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.